Welcome back. Glad you're back with me. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at one verse there today, verse 12. But before we do, I want to ask you a couple questions. And honestly, asking questions works a little better when there's a room full of people. But nonetheless, I want you to think about them at least. Uh, what did you do this week? What about last month? What about last year? You know, most of us have had pretty full days. I don't know what you did this week, but mine started out with going to watch the total eclipse and and it got into the path of totality and really enjoyed that. I took some time off of vacation time, but in reality, most of us will have very full days. Some days are more full than others, but I tend to evaluate my activity based on success. There was plenty of failure to go around, I know, as well, but success is the thing that I use to evaluate, I think. The longer the period you evaluate, the more there is to process. And the more that there is to process, the more impactful the event has to be to make the list. You know, when you thought about those questions I asked, what were the things that popped into your head? Were they little tiny things like going to the grocery store or stopping for fuel or, you know, was it, or was it the big things that happened? When I started writing this, the morning that I began, I built a fire, I ate an apple, I drank some coffee. It was a pretty simple list. Wasn't a lot of activity going on. The people I was with were, were all sleeping and it was drizzling rain outside and it was peaceful and quiet as I watched the fire burn. And then the day began to wake and emails and texts began to flow as least as best they could in the location that I was in. And pretty soon everything was raining down on me, even the sky, <laughs> because it was raining. You know what's funny? That day's really, compared to most of my days, was very, very simple. It wasn't a normal day. It was a vacation day. The one thing Oh, there were lots of things that were going on in my business, but they were being managed by other people. The issues that came up were handled promptly and professionally. And, and all I really needed to do was sit back and enjoy a campfire and sip some coffee. I say all this to emphasize that when Jesus uses the word everything, he means everything. When coupled with an instruction, that means that the instruction is to be carried out in every situation. No limitations. And so read with me Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the time that we have to spend here as... Um, as this is viewed and as I preach it. And God, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds, our ears, um, to hear the words of Jesus in a new and fresh way. Father, I pray that we'll pay attention, that we will um, be mindful that as Jesus spoke these words, they were very meaningful, they were impactful. And as we read them, Father, I pray that they'll be just so, that they'll be the same way, that we will hear and recognize that Jesus is giving us instruction. And because he's giving us instruction, we should heed that instruction and pay mind to it. Let it impact our lives and our thoughts and our ways. Father, I pray that we'll not only hear the word, but we'll be doers of the word as well, that we will take these words of Jesus and apply them to our lives in such a way that as we walk through our daily lives, as full as they may be, or as empty as they may be, thinking about everything. Father, help us to hear today. In Jesus' name, amen. This is one of those verses that like maybe like John 3.16, it's often quoted but rarely applied. These tiny little, this tiny little verse on the heels of Jesus telling us to trust God for everything, for life, for food, for clothes, for the very breath that we breathe. 
It challenges us not only to embrace everything trust in God, but now everything how we will treat other people. This is quite frankly a a lifestyle commitment of relating to people. It's not just a, a passing fad or a little piece of phrase that Jesus spewed out to be ignored. It was literally, you trust God for everything, now let's treat everything, treat everyone in every situation just like this. I've heard people say, I I love Jesus, but I hate people. Well, I'm going to hate to break it to you, but if you hate people, you can't love Jesus because Jesus loves people. It's a, a lifestyle of living. I've heard people say, I'll help that person for Jesus, but I won't like it. Well, then I would say you're not helping that person for Jesus because Jesus would like it, even if you don't like the person. This little verse is not applied because I think we lack the commitment in everything to trust Jesus. I think if we can really trust Jesus with our lives, we, you know, we say that when we accept Christ as our Savior, we've trusted Jesus. Well, you know, if we can really trust Jesus in everything, then in everything we can do unto others as we would have them do unto us, the golden rule. And so this principle that Jesus lays out may be foreign to you. Now, I know you've possibly heard it or probably heard it. Even in school, we will, they would tell it to us when I was young. But this principle is backwards in how we deal with people. It's not the way that we do it. And so I know for a fact that we fail to apply this little verse in our everyday lives. Nonetheless, Jesus said in everything, in other words, always heed my instruction. Another reason we fail to apply this passage is our belief that um, it is a transactional principle. And I have to tell you that there's nothing transactional about what Jesus said here at all. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Now, you may think, well, that sounds like a transaction. No, it really doesn't. Because I think to talk about this, we almost have to talk about what it doesn't mean as much as we talk about what it does mean. What it doesn't say is do unto others before they do unto you. It, it doesn't say do unto others so they will do unto you. It's, it's not a transaction that is that happens in life. And by the way, it's really hard for us to understand that because almost every other aspect of life is transactional. It's hard because we read it incorrectly as Jesus meant it. If we would read it the way Jesus meant for it to be read and meant for it to be done, then this would be a pretty simple process. But we say to ourselves, well, you know, old so-and-so, it doesn't matter how you treat him because he's going to be a jerk no matter what. Or if I'm nice to them, they take advantage of me. And so we live in this transactional world that just goes round by it because, I mean, it's just how it works. I go to work, I get paid, I go to the grocery store and spend my pay. The grocery store orders more food and the the suppliers bring that and take that money and buy it from producers and it just goes on and on and on and everything we do is is a transaction so it is easy for us to think that way but what about with personal relationships with other people i mean try this exercise on for size next time you go to chick-fil-a tell one of the workers there thank you and see what happens you know what's going to happen. They're going to respond with, my pleasure, right back in return. And so you've made this transaction, so to speak. And personal relationships work that way. I know that there are people that I could call that would drop everything to come and help me if I was in need. In fact, it happened this last weekend, and and they didn't expect anything in return. But... 
usually what happens when they come to help, you know, as we get finished, you look at them and say, hey, man, thanks a lot. I owe you. And so seriously, can you relate to what I'm trying to say here? Of course you can. And we can relate to it because we live in a world filled with transactions. But the statement that Jesus says, do to others what you should have, what you would have them do to you is not a transaction. You know what it is? It's a picture. A picture of grace. Jesus said, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Now, you might be thinking, well, how are you getting grace out of law and the prophets? Well, I, I had an Old Testament professor once tell me that, that the, uh, the New Testament is as much a book of law as the Old Testament is a book of grace. And I, and I, believe, that it, I believe he was correct. Because both exist in both the Old and the New Testament. There is a measure of law. There's a measure of grace in both ends. And by the way, salvation has always been by grace. And so Jesus says this little statement sums up the law and the prophets. And then he applies it to interpersonal relationships. Really living by the golden rule is practicing the art of grace. Due to people what you want done to you. If someone treats you poorly, then treat them how you would like to be treated. If someone is an arrogant, narcissistic jerk and he treats you wrong, then treat him how you would like to be treated. You see, there's no transaction in that. It's just grace. Do you know what I want more than anything else in life? I want to spend eternity in heaven with my Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to worship him forever. I don't care what heaven's going to look like. It doesn't matter to me who will or be there that I could go and talk to. It, what matters to me the most is that I would be able to be there with the person who hung on the cross and died for my sins. To spend that eternity, and I, and I have news for you, I don't deserve the grace that was given me in order to have that surety. I know for a fact that when I die, I will enter into the presence of Jesus Christ because I gave my life to him and trusted him as my Savior. I asked him to forgive me of the sins, the very sins that made him, have, made him be crucified on a cross. He gave up his life voluntarily because he knew that I needed a savior. And I want to tell you that is the absolute picture of grace. And so then we deal with other people and we deal with them in a non-transactional way of saying, you know what? I'm going to do to others what I want them to do to me. Man, what a picture of grace that is. Jesus tells us to treat people that way because he knows we can understand it when we accept his offer of salvation. When we accept grace and by faith believe that Jesus is God's son, that he was hung on a cross for our sins, that he died and on the third day he arose, when we place our faith in that truth, his grace pours over us and salvation pours in. Man, you know, Jesus said, live by this golden rule of treating people. Let people see grace the way you've experienced grace. If you know him as Savior, you know what that grace is like. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I can tell you that you'll never be able to follow this rule. It won't be possible. We'll treat people how we want to treat people, and we won't care how they treat us. But Jesus says it matters. These relationships that we have with people, even in our church, and in our home, in our families, in our workplaces, in our schools, wherever we go. In fact, Jesus said, in everything, <laughs> always treat people like you want to be treated. Now, I know if you're like me, that's hard to do. You're going to run across some folks in your life from time to time that are just going to be hard to treat like you want to be treated. 
And in fact, they're not going to treat you well at all. And they're not going to treat you like you want to be treated. But the truth is, in everything, we treat them the way we want to be treated, whether we like it or not. It is a very pleasing thing, by the way. It is a calming thing. It is a peaceful thing to have a relationship with a person that follows this rule. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you've heard this verse a hundred times. Maybe you've heard it a thousand times. Maybe you've never heard it before. But Jesus said simply, so in everything, do to others what you have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Practice this in your relationships with people. And you'll begin to understand even better the relationship that you have with Christ. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for an opportunity to live among other people and to do our very best to treat them the way we want to be treated. Father, I know that it's not possible for us to do that on our own. We need, we need the power of your Holy Spirit living through us to guide us and to show us how to treat people. Father, let us be an example of what it's like to be a follower of Christ who poured out his grace on us so that we might, through faith, be saved. Father, help us to show people what it is to live like Jesus lived, loving people, loving the Father. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. We'd love to have you here in Darty to come visit us. You, we, we still meeting next door in the fellowship hall, but we'll be back in this place before we know it, and uh, and it'll be a fine day in, indeed. Come see us, will you? Have a great week. We'll see you next time.